Hi, my name is Atomicus and I'm here to help you get into competitive TF2. If you missed the previous episode, I highly recommend checking it out before watching this one. Alright, we'll start off by talking about the competitive format slash game modes for TF2. There will be a couple of terms slash mechanics that you might not understand at first, but I'll cover them in a later episode. We have 6 vs 6, also known as 6s. This format has been designed as a deathmatch game mode for competitive TF2. The main lineup for this mode is two utility classes, usually two scouts, two soldiers, one demo man and one medic. Next up we have Highlander, also known as 9 vs 9 and it contains one of each class. It is referred as the game mode that makes it easier to switch from public to the competitive scene. This game mode focuses more on teamwork and strategies which makes it appealing to most new players. I would recommend starting off with this game mode. A third game mode exists, known as 4 vs 4. This mode isn't as old as Highlander or 6s, so the player base is relatively small. It features a limit of one of each class, with the exception of Medic and Heavy at the same time in the lineup. This mode is regarded as more deathmatch focused and faster paced than the usual 6 vs 6 playstyle, though the meta for this format is constantly changing. In this episode we shall focus on the main popular formats, which are Highlander and 6 vs 6. If you wish to see some gameplay footage of both game modes before deciding what you would like to focus on, there are several organizations that cover competitive matches such as X Division, which has been around the scene for years. They cover all formats in North America and have covered multiple LAN casted events such as ETS and GXL. Then we have Team Fortress TV that covers 6s in North America and Europe and like X Television, they have also covered LAN events like GXL and ESEA. Next up there is Blackout TV, which is the place where you can catch some top-notch Highlander action from Europe. Lastly, we have EVL TV, which is a new North American casting organization. They usually cover UGC Highlander, ESEA and other community events that normally never get the spotlight. Moving on, we shall now discuss about the basic roles of each class and the respective loadouts. Each competitive format and league slash tournament has a set of loadout rules known as whitelists which only allow a certain amount of items to be available for use because of balance issues. For now I will display the main loadouts together with some available unlocks. We'll start off with Highlander. The scout's role is severely diminished in Highlander, as its fragging capabilities are limited by full time high damage per second classes such as the heavy or the engineer. Because of that the scout is often more of a utility class helping the team by being on the flanks, capturing points and objectives, and sometimes following up on damage dealt by the combo. The combo is primarily made of the heavy, demo man, medic, and occasionally the pyro. A scout can also be used to focus classes which can cause large problems to your team, such as sniper. Most payload and attack slash defend maps can greatly limit the scout's usefulness due to their tendency to clump everyone together. But on certain King of the Hill and CP maps, a good scout can score a high amount of points due to a large amount of flanking routes which are available. The understanding of the competitive loadout concept is very crucial in tournament matches. Each loadout will dictate your playstyle which can make you more or less predictable towards the enemy players. By dedicating yourself to a certain loadout, you will sacrifice certain advantages which might allow the enemy players to play more aggressive towards your team or vice versa. As an example, if you are not using the pistol in your secondary slot as a scout, you won't be able to afford engaging in longer fights effectively since you will not have the extra damage that the pistol can offer you once you unload your scattergun shells. With that in mind, I strongly recommend in most scenarios the standard stock loadouts in the beginning until you gain more experience since you will be free of any negative stats that other items might give you making your playstyle less predictable in the end. However, certain loadouts can help you on specific maps despite the negative stats. The standard loadout for the scout is Scattergun plus Pistol plus Bastion Basher. This is the loadout that you should work on the most in the beginning. The Basher is primarily used for hurting yourself which allows the medic to build uber faster than normally. Highlander leagues allow a greater variety of unlocks than 6 vs 6 leagues do which allows for interesting strategies with different unlocks in some cases. The Atomizer can be used when you are having trouble dodging properly. If you are having trouble dealing damage from close range, you can adapt a long range loadout such as the Sandman plus Flying Cleaver in order to disrupt key classes from afar. The scout's role can be enhanced by Mad Milk and Bonk Atomic Punch, leading to a more supportive class where the milk can be used during pushes or a pick slash harassment slash distraction class that runs to the enemy spawn with Bonk as long as the scout plays smart and stays alive, opportunities to flank and to fight directly come up just like in 6 vs 6. Overall roles. 
Control the flanks and support your team during pushes from behind enemy lines. Focus on objectives and distracting the enemy team. Chase and clean up based on your teammates' damage calls or enemy behavior. Once you're behind enemy lines, try going for a medikill. Work together with your soldier as a flanking duo. The soldier often functions like a roaming soldier would in 6 vs 6. As such, many 6 vs 6 roamer strategies can be applied to Highlander as well. Often used as a roaming play class, the soldier is mostly run with gunboats, stock rocket launcher and the whip. A well-coordinated team can organize pick classes such as scout, soldier and spy to work together for a common goal, like forcing a medic to use his uber charge or taking out an engineer nest. The main skill set that you will have to practice mostly is rocket jumping, as it will allow you to move efficiently and bomb key enemy players. In most maps, the soldier is used to control the flanks. He is used to defend the flanks of his own team and in turn harass his opponents. Some teams will run the soldier closer to the combo so that he can use his splash damage to protect the combo. The black box plus conch can be used as a powerful loadout for a passive playstyle which can reward aggressive team pushes once the conch is charged. You can also use the direct head in order to deal with level 3 sentries easier. Overall roles. Control the flanks and support your team during pushes from behind enemy lines. Work together with your scout as a flanking duo. Once you're behind enemy lines, try going for a medikill. Rocket jump behind enemy lines in order to eliminate key support classes such as sniper and distract the enemy team. The pyro is considered a support class. The pyro's main job in Highlander is to protect the medic. It also has the job of displacing and neutralizing enemy ubers with his air blast, spy checking to neutralize the enemy spy, protecting its team's sentry gun by deflecting projectiles and providing flank support when required. The pyro most commonly positions himself around the combo, so as to allow them to deal a lot of damage to the enemy team's damage dealing classes like heavy or demo man, without having to focus on classes like spies or scouts. Alternatively, if the pyro's team is aware enough of the enemy spy, then the pyro could take the role of a roaming pyro. This involves the pyro flanking the enemy team and trying to deal a lot of damage, possibly to get a pick on the medic, which could then allow their team to push in. However, you should focus on just defending the combo in the beginning until you gain more experience. The primary loadout for the pyro is the greaser, flare gun, slash shotgun, and power jack. Since the extinguisher nerf, the power jack has become the standard choice for pyros as it allows you to relocate faster due to the extra movement speed and sometimes even get some health back by killing spies with it. The main practice focus should be air blast timings together with the flare gun since it's the main combo damage dealer for the pyro. Shotgun is usually used against spies that use the spicicle, however you can deal with them even without the shotgun and the flare gun is ultimately much more superior against the other classes than the shotgun. You should also use the home wrecker when it comes to defending your engineer's level 3 sentry on defense. Overall roles. Defend your combo classes which are heavy, demo and especially the medic. Assist the engineer on payload maps to help him keep his level 3 sentry up and running for longer times. Spy check around you to make sure the enemy spy can't get a kill on a key player. Minimize as much explosive damage with your air blast so your team can survive longer. The demo man's main job is dealing high amounts of damage. His weapons are great at dishing out large amounts of damage to crowds of players and slow high HP targets. However, he lacks the ability to reliably protect himself from close range threats, most often from the scout. So he is often paired up with the heavy and medic to form the core combo of a Highlander team. He serves a similar role to his sixes counterpart of dealing damage and leading up uber pushes, but he is also expected to deal with sentry nests. The main standard loadout is stock grenade launcher, stock sticky launcher and bottle. Some demos use the caber for those rare situations where you might be able to get a crucial pick by sticky jumping a key enemy player like a medic. The lock and load is the soldier's direct hit counterpart which deals 20% more damage to buildings. A general rule for dealing with sentries is to focus the engineer instead of the sentry because of the wrangler shield. However, because of the latest update the engineer has been slightly nerfed so the shield is not as strong as before. Another weapon that can be used to deny pushes in certain choke points is the loose cannon, however it isn't available in certain leagues. Overall roles. Deal the main damage and dictate your team's pushes without overextending too much. Support your combo classes and push together as a team based on your damage output towards the enemy team. Deploy sticky traps in key choke points in order to deny a push or force an uber early on. The Heavy is the vanguard of a Highlander team, the backbone force of pushing or defending objectives, outputting great damage per second while being able to tank incoming spam thanks to his 450 health pool when buffed. However, as Heavy is very slow, he is almost useless without his health buff, so he will usually never stray from your medic. 
Positioning is also very crucial since it's harder to relocate due to the slow speed. Heavies are usually pocketed by the medic and they form the main combo together with the demo. All players around the team should work around the combo helping them secure supreme victory. The main heavy loadout is the stock minigun, sandwich and fists of steel. The sandwich should be thrown 95% of the time for your medic when he is low on health. However, you must be sure that the area is clear before doing so. Experienced players will attack a heavy when they know that they have dealt some damage to the medic as most heavies panic and focus on healing the medic as soon as possible. In some cases, it's actually better to focus in front of you, possibly killing some targets even though your medic is low on health, than having tunnel vision on saving your medic and risking both of you dying in the end while trying to switch to the sandwich. Due to the recent update, Natasha also became a valid loadout choice for King of the Hill maps in particular. In King of the Hill maps, the heavy is more of a support class trying to focus on denying flanking classes and because of the Natasha's recent defense buff, it is an ideal weapon for this role together with the slow effect. The Fists of Steel will allow to escape in one piece while retreating but can also be used as an offensive tool to gain ground in a push, such as blowing up a sticky trap and forcing the enemy sniper to waste a fully charged shot on you while still surviving in the end. The gloves are running urgently are usually used on long maps for the extra movement speed, however the extra mini crits damage that you'll receive isn't worth the extra speed since most of the time the soldier can offer you a speed buff with his whip. Overall roles. Share the burden with your demo and work together as the backbone force of the team. Position yourself properly in order to intercept the enemy combo or prepare for a team push. Defend your medic from flanking classes and finally, offer defensive slash offensive support for your team. The engineer's main job in Highlander is to defend points and deny areas to the enemy team. Through the use of the sentry gun, the engineer is easily able to defend and stall for a point in time or force the enemy team to use an uber, primarily just for the sentry. However, Highlander presents a new risk in the form of the spy, whose sapper can destroy the engineer's buildings. The engineer is also often used to push the card on payload maps together with the scout. You should expect the spy to attack you when the enemy team is preparing a big push as you'll usually be distracted in the moment, which makes up for the ideal moment for a spy to strike. The standard offensive loadout is the shotgun, pistol and gunslinger. Mini sentries will help you push forward with the team as they require less time to build than a normal sentry. The standard defensive loadout is the rescue ranger, wrangler and stock wrench. The rescue ranger will allow you to repair your sentry from afar which renders you less vulnerable to splash damage as you're trying to repair your sentry with a wrench. It can also be used to pick up your sentry from afar in case the defensive line has fallen. The wrangler adds a decent shield that provides some extra points for the sentry in order to suck up more damage before going down. It would also allow you to extend the firing range greatly which can help you set up your nest in positions where sentries would be useless without the extra range. Additional wrenches can be used such as the jack and southern hospitality, however as with all unlocks they have different negative and positive traits. The hospitality wrench could be used without risks since pirates shouldn't be able to get near you and it could help you keep track of the spice due to the bleeding damage. The Jag offers extra build speed, however it has a 20% repair penalty which will make it harder for you to repair the sentry with it. Though you can compensate a little with the Rescue Ranger. However, the Rescue Ranger has to be reloaded where the wrench can be used constantly. Overall roles. Set up a defensive line for your team by providing them with sentries, dispensers and teleporters when possible. On the offensive, help your scout by pushing the card and capturing points together while still providing the team with support from the buildings. Help your flanking classes, like soldier and scout, by covering the flanking routes on certain maps. For example, king of the hill and CP maps. The medic is a vital part of every team, with his ability to use uber charges or crits charges on teammates for pushes from point to point or for saving teammates. Due to this, he is usually the most targeted player by the enemy team. If a team loses a medic, they are posed with a large disadvantage of no heals and may be pushed back to another point or even lose the game. As the medic supercharge is an important part of a match, they will usually be protected well by the combo classes such as Heavy, Pyro and Demo Man. In some cases, the medic might have to leave his teammates while he gets a health back. Medics will usually communicate their uber charge percentage as well as their position to their team so they can prepare pushes and defenses and be ready for an enemy push. Because of the importance of the uber charge, it is best you should use an uber charge rather than dying with one and losing it completely even if you don't get an ideal uber push slash defense. 
The most common loadout is the Crusader's Crossbow, Medic Gun, Slash Crit Squeak, and Ubersaw. The crossbow will allow you to heal teammates from afar in situational moments. It is a good weapon that you should focus practicing with, however, the stock syringe gun is a good start early on as well. As a golden rule, you should never use Bloodsauger, just don't. Some medics will switch medic gun depending on the situation, sometimes surprising enemies with a crit's charge, usually done with a demo man for maximum damage output. The quick fix is also a valid medic gun, however you should stick with the uber charge medic gun until you gain more experience. Overall roles, heal the demo man at the beginning of each round and try overhealing everybody before reaching the battlefield. Follow the combo classes and prioritize healing them over the rest of the classes unless they're not nearby. Be aware of your surroundings so you can heal your teammates efficiently and position yourself properly. Never overextend to peak. The combo classes will be your eyes and their behavior will show you what to expect from the enemy team. Always focus on just healing and only damage the enemy when you're retreating or being chased on your own. And this one is very important. Do not go battle medic. Ever. If you wish to deal damage, just pick a different class. For healing priorities, first comes the demo, then the heavy, pyro, ng, scout, soldier, then sniper, and finally, spy. The scout and soldier have the fastest movement speed, considering rocket jumping, therefore they should rely on medkits more often than the medic. The sniper is considered a pick class and used to support his teammates while sitting back away from the battle. The sniper's main job is to kill the enemy combo and the other sniper, while taking out unsuspecting enemies in the process. He is very important for holding positions and denying areas from the enemies. A skilled sniper can pick off any careless players venturing into his sights, and thus can hold the team back from pushing. However, he does need protection, which usually comes in the form of a pyro or gunslinger engineer. Sniper is often a target for the enemy team's spy, scout and soldier. High level snipers will combat the loneliness of sitting behind the lines by playing around the combo so enemy players can't pick him off so easily as if he would be alone. The main loadout for the sniper is a stock sniper rifle, razorback and any stock melee weapon. The razorback is usually used in order to force the enemy spy to open fire on you in order to kill you, making yourself and the team aware of the spy's location much easier. This also helps a lot if there's a friendly sentry nearby since it will be able to target the spy from losing his disguise. However, the Razorback can become completely useless if the spy will fight you 1 vs 1. At best, depending on your reaction and the enemy spy's aim, you can buy yourself a couple of seconds to try to escape or fight off the spy. The sniper can also use Jarate to assist in pushes or to force pushing enemies to retreat. The Sydney Slipper can also be used to focus on key enemy players together with your team by marking them and finish them off with the extra mini crit damage from most rifle shots. The Huntsman can also be used for a more mid-range aggressive style and shutting down choke points via arrow spam. However, there are classes that can do that much more effectively. The Machina has a similar role in being able to penetrate multiple players with one shot, allowing you to even kill a medic that's hiding behind a teammate in a narrow passage. The Tracer rounds, however, will alert the enemy team of your location and an organized team will be able to enter your blind spots after your shots. The stock SMG is also used by some players mostly as a finisher for mid and close range combat in case a headshot or body shot wasn't able to finish off a target. Lastly, the shift can be used primarily against spies due to the ability of being able to keep track of them because of the bleeding damage. Overall roles. Focus on key enemies such as demo, heavy, medic, sniper and other secondary targets that might conveniently show in your sight. Position yourself according to the enemy sniper position in order to counter snipe him properly and win the duel. Support your team with Jarati during big pushes if you're using it. Be aware of where the enemy combo classes might be so you can prepare a fully charged shot for when they show up and also be aware if your flank classes have fallen so you don't get off flank easily. The spy is used as a support class. He is often used to pick the enemy medic, heavy, demo man, sniper, engineer or any key targets that are giving his team trouble. Spies in Highlander must be aware that the enemy team has a full time pyro and spy checking more often, leaving the spy with less opportunities for picks. The spy is also the best scouting class in the game, providing invaluable information for his team. He can find how far along a medic is to fully charging his ubercharge, what weapons each enemy is using, where the enemy team is located and in what direction they are moving towards in the safety provided by his point of view. Because of this, spy players should get used to relying as much information as possible during a match while using Mumble. When spotted or confronted by an enemy, a spy is almost always put at a disadvantage, due to his low damage output on his primary weapons. In times of need, spies may need to use one of the many techniques developed to deceive or lure their enemies in positions for a stab that otherwise wouldn't be possible. These are called trick stabs and are often a technique highly exploited by most of the high level spies. However, High level players are usually immune to such trick steps, so personally I wouldn't recommend relying on them later on. They are, however, very helpful early on until you gain more experience. 
The main pilot rod is usually stock revolver, sapper, dead ringer and stock knife. Even after its nerf, the dead ringer can still be used properly except not as often as before. The revolver is the most reliable spy weapon with highest damage per second which should become your main weapon that you should practice early on. The ambassador encourages a long range playstyle making you essentially a secondary sniper which is a powerful playstyle since you will force the pyre to chase you leaving their combo vulnerable without a pyre nearby. However, this playstyle should be tried out after you gain more experience. Another common knife used is the Spicicle, which is a couple of seconds of pyro insurance, making you briefly invulnerable to fire by losing the Spicicle in the process. As a golden rule, you should become less reliable on your knife and focus on improving your revolver aim, as the knife becomes less practical the more experienced players you will face due to the simple fact that a backstep can be blocked just by turning around. On top of that, the hitboxes are funky at times, where you should be getting a backstep but instead you get a regular poke attack. In terms of watches, each of them are valid and they serve a specific playstyle, with positive and negative rewards on their own. As an example, the clock and dagger is usually used for staying invisible for longer periods, focusing on relying more information than usual and also getting that crucial kill that you're patiently waiting for. Overall roles. Focus key enemy players such as Medic, Sniper, Demo, Heavy and Engineer. Distract the enemy team by making them waste time searching after you. Offer as much information as possible to your team if you're using Mumble. Strike when the enemy is distracted the most, such as during major pushes or while they individually focus on a target or one vs one duel. As long as you deliver important kills even in a suicidal way early on, you're doing your job. As you gain more experience, your death ratio should change. Each class in the end has the responsibility of being self-aware as much as possible in order to improve their game sense and efficiency at their own roles. There are several extra things such as what type of information each class should offer to their team, but we'll get into that in a later episode, as this was primarily a focus on the basic roles and general idea how each of the classes work in the Highlander format. On that note, we shall end this episode here, and in the next episode we shall focus on the 6 vs 6 format. You can find links in the description for most of the topics discussed earlier, and you should subscribe to get notified when the next episode will get released. If you have any questions, do post them in the comment section or in my same group. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.